one of the most confusing and least understood compute feature in any cloud provider is burstable ec2 instances in aws or virtual machines in gcp or similarly in other cloud providers when it comes to burstable the documentation is quite confusing and esoteric and it's quite hard to see if burstable is useful for your use case and if you are saving the money because whenever you talk to the account managers or sales people or even with the technical people of the cloud provider they give you a feeling that if you are using their burstable instances you are saving money let's have a quick look to see if that's really the case and in this video i'm trying to explain the burstable instances in as simple words as possible first thing you need to know is that with the burstable instances there are a lot of variations and a lot of fine prints and conditions too in very simple words at a high level what burstable virtual machine means that it guarantees you one cpu but then it could burst to two cpus and these numbers could vary for example it could guarantee you two cpus and maybe burst to four cpus depends on the server type or instance type then there are a lot of conditions which apply to that bursting on the ground level it's all about credits whenever you are under using that server you accumulate credits and whenever you are over using that server and by over using i mean maybe going over one cpu if it is guaranteeing you one cpu when whenever you are over using you lose credits and then as i mentioned there are a lot of conditions there too and you need to read the documentation of your cloud provider but these two concepts about guaranteeing a certain threshold of cpu and then allowing you a limit to burst and then the game of credits this is all there is to it to this burstable thing now let's have a quick look at a pricing example for aws ec2 instances one of the commonly used ec2 instance type is t3 medium they are the general purpose virtual machines for instance in t3 medium ec2 instance you have two virtual cpus and the on-demand price for that virtual cpu per hour is 0.0418 in us dollars the documentation says that if you burst that threshold of two vcpus then you will be charged you will be charged an additional cost of 0.1 dollar for the whole instance so it is 0.05 per, per vcpus so as it has two vcpus so it becomes 0.1 dollar so if you continuously bursting if you're continuously bursting for one hour it means that you will be charged an additional cost so the price goes to 0.1418 so the, if you look at the first point the initial price with the guaranteed one is 0 0.04 but if you use the bursting then the price goes to 0.1418 which is not really a simple cost optimization it is actually quite a lot more than three percent four percent increase and i have seen that with various instance sizes this cost could easily um, jump to 50 percent even more than 100 percent uh, additional charges so whenever you are using the burstable instances be careful make sure that you understand your load and if you're continuously bursting then maybe it's time to not to use the burstable instances but go with the regular instances and always try to understand that how what what the fine print of that cloud provider reads because what happens is that aws or any other cloud provider they try to run their virtual machines on a shared hardware and they allow every tenant on that physical machine to burst. So if everyone is bursting, then AWS has to provision more resources or maybe move some uh, servers to others or even just simply deny the bursting. Because in some cases, AWS doesn't guarantee guarantees you bursting. So your workload may suffer. 
I hope this was useful. If you have anything to add, please put them in the comment. Thank you.